The Canon EOS R50, the successor to the M50 and the M50 Mark II, but with a new mount. That means anyone in the EFM system is probably not going to see any new camera bodies. I'm one of the people that is in EFM. I have two M6 Mark IIs. Currently, I did have two M50s. Use those for my YouTube channel for many years. Before that, I had a SL2 that I was trying out to see what Canon's autofocus was like in video, and that was good as well, but then I moved into EFM. Technically, I did own the original EOS M for a while, but sold that and didn't touch EFM until the M50 came out. I'm going to mess around with the new Bing chat, which is the GPT AI machine learning you know, human language system thing. Yeah, I just got access to it a few minutes ago. I have the developer preview of Edge. Here is the R50. You can see $679.99 currently. Canon R50. It might be confusing this with the R10. Let's skip the sidebar for now. So you ask it what it is, it starts searching on these things. It searches for specifications, I guess just for the R50. It says here are some of the most important differences. The R50 is a mirrorless camera. The Canon EOS R50 is the RF mount and EFM mount, which is correct. Clearly this is wrong. R50 4K uncropped video at 30 frames a second, oversampled from 6K while the M50 Mark II 4K cropped up to 24 FPS, which is correct. And then it also has the Digic X processor and Digic 8, which is correct. This uh, chat is not true artificial intelligence because these are not intelligent responses. And then it says uh, the R50 can shoot 12 frames a second, electronic first curtain, and 15 full electronic. And then the M50 Mark II 10 frames a second uh, with AF lock. 7.4 with AF tracking. I think that's also correct. And then it also mentions the UVC, UAC compatibility, which is a type of webcam connecting your camera to the computer functionality. And the new R50 does have, have that. It's supposed to be plug and play. The M50 Mark II does have clean HDMI. It can use the webcam utility, which is software you have to install, and it's low resolution. At the very least, the R50 has an improved webcam experience overall. What batteries do the two cameras use? This is an important difference between the M50 Mark II and the R50. And we'll see if it is correct. That is incorrect. The R50 uses LPE 17, M50 Mark II uses the LPE 12. The 17 is higher capacity, but if you look at the specifications, the M50 Mark II is a little more power efficient. Not any true benefits, but I think it's good that Canon moved to the LPE 17 for all of their RF cameras that are lower end. Uh, you know, realistically would use a smaller battery, so that's what they did. They're not going to use their large battery in everything. Now I'm asking it which camera will be better for action photography. Let's see what it says. For action photography, it says the R50 may be better choice than the M50 Mark II. Here are some reasons. It has higher frames per second burst shooting has the Digic X processor, which is newer than the 8. That makes more sense. More complex autofocus stuff. A wider range of lenses available, including some high performance telephoto and zoom lenses, which are ideal for action photography. That is true. They're very expensive, most likely, but it is true, at least on the native end. Both of them can use EF lenses. It says right here is that the EFM mount has fewer lenses and may require you to use an adapter. So that's that's a good response. Very nice. And down here it says the it's talking about video, uncropped 4K 30 frames per second, oversampled. So it's good, decent response. You know, it, it makes sense. If a person that didn't know a lot about cameras, they would at the very least get a decent response. I'm asking it, can you tell me the same thing, but without all of the difficult to understand technical information? It says, sure, I can simplify it for you. The R50 is better for action photography, photography, better for action photography because it can take more pictures in a second. So you don't miss a moment it Has newer and smarter brain. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> so it can focus and process better. Wow, that is great. It can use more and better lenses so you can zoom and capture better. <laughs> it can record better video. Here I'm asking it anything else. It doesn't have to apply to action photography. Use the simple language like you did before. Well, there are some other things that make the Canon R50 a good camera, such as it has a touchscreen. It can flip and rotate. 
so you can see yourself and control the camera easily. That's true. See, it's not referencing the M50 Mark II anymore, but then it says viewfinder, shows you stuff, <laughs> has wireless connection, uh, face and eye detection. I'm asking how about more differences between the M52, M50 Mark II, and the R50? I'm adding that specifier so that it gets the idea of which camera I'm actually talking about. It says, sure, I can tell you more differences about the two cameras. M52 is, that's incorrect. <laughs> And I say that's incorrect. The M52 is not a DSLR. It's a successor. I spelled that incorrectly. The successor to the M50 and it has the EFM mount. Please make sure you are referring to the correct camera. You're right. The M52 is not a DSLR, but a mirrorless camera with the EFM mount. I was confused by the search result that said it was a DSLR. Thank you for correcting me. If a beginner photographer were to try to use this functionality, they wouldn't know that there were mistakes potentially, and they might read it and think that it's fully correct, which, you know, you shouldn't do that. So this is the M52 and R50 are both mirrorless cameras, but they have different mounts, the EFM mount and the RF mount. This means R50 can use more and better lenses, especially the ones designed for the RF mount, which is true, but they're very expensive. So it says the M50 has a low resolution sensor, 24.1 megapixels, and this is incorrect. Let's do a refresh redo, because I'm probably starting to really confuse it. Doing a refresh, I'm saying compare the R50 and the M50 using these two official Canon website pages only. It tried, but it didn't like do it properly. And it mentions uh, faster continuous shooting, 10 frames a second, which is incorrect. R50 has a larger high resolution LCD, which is correct, but also wrong. <laughs> uh, EVF dots versus the LCD dots of the other camera. The R50 is a smaller crop factor that's also incorrect. It's correct in the sense that the R50 is better, but it's incorrect in everything else. All the specifications are incorrect. Did you actually use the two web pages I provided? I'm sorry, I did use the two web pages you provided, but I also used web search results to find more information. Maybe some of the specifications have changed. No, they haven't. Here we go. Yes, please use only the two web pages provided. Please do not use any other website results. So I think this is too difficult for it. And again, the R50 is new, but it seems to be having trouble with the M50. Here I'm asking it with the included kit lenses of the two lenses of the, of the two lens, kit lenses of these two cameras that I gave it. Now the differences in reality is that one has 18 millimeters, one has 50 millimeters on the wide end. Now it's saying at 5.6. It, it didn't get that correct. I think it's 6.3 as well on the 15 to 45. I don't even have that lens anymore. Uh, focal length range 15 to 45 which means that it can zoom in more that's totally incorrect <laughs> and, all right here i am specifying the actual lenses with their correct information so you've got the different focal lengths you've got this lens you have the super zoom and then the i think 55 to 210 was just announced which has a slower maximum aperture you don't have much in the way of native aps-c lenses you can use rf full frame lenses which is a nice benefit, but then there, there aren't any third-party lenses. Uh, Canon pushed out some of the third-party manufacturers that were making RF lenses. Doing a reset, we'll see if it gets the right information. Anyways, with the R50, you have some benefits and some limitations in the lens department. You can, of course, always adapt, which you can do on both systems. If you still wanted to go EFM, you have all of the native stuff, which is still being sold for the most part. But Tamron stopped, I think they stopped selling their Super Zoom. And also Canon stopped selling their original uh, 18 to whatever, 55, I think it was. But they do still have all of the other stuff currently. I don't know how long that will be the situation. So it says the RFS lens is designed for the EOS R, EOS R system, which is correct with APS-C sensors, such as the R7, R10, that's correct. EFM is designed for the EOSM system. Uh, and that's nicely formatted, it's correct. It says the M50, M6, only have different lens mounts, which is true, and they are not compatible, which is also true. If a beginner were to put that information in, they would get a good response there. And it says RFS, uh, slightly longer focal length range, which is incorrect. It's doing that again. And it says the RFS is slightly larger and heavier, sure. That's probably true, especially the mount end. Differences between the lenses would apply to photography in various ways depending on the subject, lighting, creative intention, useless information. It's like fluff. 
the EFM 15 to 45 suited for landscapes, architecture, group portraits, capture more of the scene, which is correct in a single frame because it has the 15 millimeters instead of the 18 millimeters. The RFS suited for close-ups detail that there's not really, the RFS doesn't do anything else. Now I'm asking, what about the aperture ranges between the two lenses? The EFM lens has a f3.5 on the wide end difference that it notices, but we've got 3.5 versus 4.5 and you got a wider one i'm not sure if you were to put this on 18 millimeters what the actual aperture would be it might be 4.5 but i don't have that lens anymore so it says this means that the efm 15 to 45 has a wider maximum aperture so this is what we wanted it found that and it noticed it and it mentioned it especially at the wide end with the zoom range the efm can let more light in and create a shallower depth of field slightly than the RF lens. Okay, the RF would require higher ISO or slower shutter speed to achieve the same exposure. It's not taking into account it's a zoom lens and if I were to put the EFM lens on 18 millimeters, what the aperture difference would be, if any. But uh, yeah, you get, you get the point is that this thing is not good for this task right now. What are the alternatives to the R50? Please make it a two, two level bullet point list include any differences that the other cameras have which make them better than the R50. Didn't uh, make a two level bullet point list like I asked it. So it says uh, smaller and lighter that's incorrect. The difference with the R10 I think is that it has a cropped 4k 60. Fully incorrect for the most part. Uh, Z50 a 20.9 megapixel. And I told it to mention <laughs> benefits. That's, that's not a benefit. Uh, it doesn't have a tilting touchscreen. It has a flip down touchscreen oh man it doesn't have a more advanced autofocus system than r50 uh the xt32 if you're a beginner do not use the current iteration of this microsoft bing chat thing to try to decide on a camera because it's going to give you a bunch of wrong incorrect information now it kind of gets the point correct but then it fails completely on the actual information involved i'll let it describe itself because at the very least it'll probably get that correct. So it learns the patterns and rules of language such as grammar, syntax, semantics, context, by analyzing data and predicting the next word or phrase based on previous ones. So there's no true thought, there's no true logic. It's taking a huge amount of information and trying to get the right answer out of it, but it's predicting the next word. And that doesn't work in this context. It might if it, if there were a lot more information. Maybe Bing is limiting its ability or, you know, something's going on where it's just not smart enough. It's not, doesn't have enough information to make it work properly. Just tell me about the photographybonsai.com author, video creator, and photography enthusiast. I, I, I know where it's pulling that information from. Based in Northern Illinois. He started the website in 2010 as a way to share his passion and knowledge of <laughs> photography so as to travel and experience in Japan and other countries. It's it's uh, improvising here. <laughs> I did go on a cruise, so maybe maybe that counts. Uh, he also posts reviews, tutorials, tips, various photography and videography products and techniques such as cameras, lenses, flash, studio lights, etc. He uploads to his YouTube channel and Amazon, where he is part of the Video Creator Hub, which is true. This guy is a weeb enthusiast of Japanese culture and language and he chose the word bonsai for his website name because it means 10,000 years or long life in Japanese so it's I don't know if it's making sure that I'm correct here he also likes to use elements of Japanese culture and language in his videos and photos which is such as anime anime manga cosplay that's true man this thing's calling me out <laughs> he has traveled to Japan several times as in twice and uh has visited many places and events such as tokyo i've never been to kyoto i've never been to osaka i've never uh i don't think i've been to nagoya i have been to akihabara i have not been to kamagat the way that this generative thing works is that it pulls in information like it said and it tries to find the next word and it's, it's coming up with stuff that doesn't exist in reality, the truth of it. But for whatever reason, all the connections that have been made, that's what 
results. So it's possible that people in a similar situation to me have written similar things and then it somehow cross reference their experiences with my experiences and it just gets it mixed up, which we could see with all of the camera stuff. YouTube channel dedicated to his Japan travels, which is incorrect, called Japan Box. <laughs> oh God. Bing Chat is trying to predict the future, but uh, this is incorrect. I do not have a Japan bonsai. So this is basing the... Thank you for correcting me and providing more details about Scott and his YouTube channels. Appreciate the feedback and I will try to improve the accuracy. So let's, we'll see if the, it takes this information. That's kind of dangerous, honestly, to take user input like this. If it does, what, you know, that is dangerous because people could put fake information and, and like damning information against people. So I kind of doubt that it does, but who knows. That was quite the journey with Bing Chat. It honestly is a terrible for this use case, as you've seen. Hopefully it improves. Hopefully it is capable of getting the correct information and actually parsing it, using it properly, which currently it does not do that. Now it might be just the way that the GPT type AI works. Hopefully not, because that's totally useless in that case especially for people that don't understand the actual information and they don't know anything about it in the first place. Because if you come in totally new, you come in without any information, you're going to be fed so much useless garbage. Yeah, that's too bad. I'm sure there are ways to use this properly. I have used it for some programming and it works pretty well. Or at least I used chat GPT. I haven't used the Bing chat thing for it, so who knows how that'll work. But uh, it's possible Microsoft is limiting its ability just to, you know, realistically you be able to process all of this information on, the, on their end. Who knows, they might have made it stupid. Chat GPT, you can't actually get web results, you can't actually get current information, so that has its own limitation. If you are interested in the R50 or the M50 Mark II, the gist is that the EFM system is likely going away. You have the benefit currently of some lenses not in RF mounts and then third parties, same situation. Currently EFM has the Sigma trio of lenses, uh, the Viltrox trio, which are all prime lenses. You have a bunch of manual lenses, which RF mount probably is not restricting like third party manual lenses, but anything autofocus, you're gonna have to use RF mount. You have to use EF, EFS, RFS, the few that exist. The gist is that the R50 is a significantly better camera than the M50 and 50 Mark II. So if you do want to upgrade, look at it, maybe go to Sony, maybe go to Nikon or whatever else, so Fujifilm, you can check those out as well. But R50 is there, it's an option. Hope you enjoyed this video. Scott, after every bonsai, thanks.